Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Hey Tubies, it's Psychic Bob. Well, welcome to Yoga Friday. We're starting a new series on Friday because you know we always call Friday Free For All Friday. It'd just be a mix of things. A lot of you been asking about specific topics and I've been getting a lot of requests for, to learn more about the Eastern mysteries and its magic. So on Friday, we're going to focus towards the East. We're going to turn our sights towards the East and learn about its mysteries and magic. And today we're going to talk about one of the most powerful gods of the East, Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is one of the ancient gods of India. He's part of the Trimurti, the Hindu trinity of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Brahma is the creator, Vishnu the preserver, and Shiva the destroyer. Now when we talk about Shiva's destroyer, it doesn't mean he's evil. It means that he brings the universe to close. That in Hinduism, all life goes in a cycle of beginning, sustenance, and then completion. And he helps with the completion. And from death, all life comes again. Lord Shiva is known as the Master Yogi. And here on my tapestry, you can see him. He often has a blue color and he carries a trident, which means he's the Lord of all time. Each prong is past, present, and future. He sits in a yogic pose. As you notice, he's sitting in meditation. He's wearing Rudrashka beads. Rudrashka is a plant in India, and the beads, the seeds, are considered powerful um, for invoking Shiva's energy. Lord Shiva is believed to reside in the Himalayan mountains. He sits at the top of Mount Kailash, and he, and through his mystic meditation, he maintains the entire world. Lord Shiva is a fascinating God because at one time he's an ascetic. He's a monk who lives in the mountains and meditates. And sometimes he comes down to the earth and he gets married and has a family. And then he returns to the mountains. So Lord Shiva is a householder God as well as a God of the yogis. Now you'll notice some features here I want to point out. Here, as I showed you earlier, is the trident, but he also has a drum that he plays. This drum is the drum of destruction, and when Shiva starts to play his drum, the entire universe starts to fold in on itself. And it's believed that eventually he will play his drum at the end of this age, and all the universe will return unto him. Lord Shiva is known to have a number of pets as well. He loves all the creatures of the wild. And for those of you who are Wiccan, uh, many people find that uh, the, the Western God, the Horn God, and Lord Shiva have some similarities. They both wander in the wilderness and they're protector of animals. So one of Lord Shiva's protectors and guides is a snake. He has a giant cobra who stays with him. And I really love that. I'm not afraid of snakes. I love snakes, so I just think that's really cool. And he travels on his trusted bull, Nandi. He rides Nandi through the mountains and sets up camp and places for meditation. Nandi is his mystic bull and a beloved pet of Lord Shiva. Now, as we said, Lord Shiva is sitting here, and in this picture, he's known as the Maha Yogi, or the Adi Yogi. Adi Yogi means the primal yogi. All yoga that exists originated with Lord Shiva. His hand is raised in blessing, which is the Om, which means he sustains the universe through the cosmic vibration of Om. And so many yogis chant the mantra, Om. And that's the actual written form, and that would be read, Om. And so he carries the sound of the cosmos. He, through his meditation, maintains the universe. But at the end of time, he opens his eyes, and fire comes from his third eye, and he begins playing his drum, and the universe folds into him. Now you'll notice up here at his hair, Lord Shiva's hair is described in the scriptures as being matted and wild. Like a yogi, he wanders and his hair is just wild and free. But coming from the top knot on his hair is a stream of water. What is that? That is the mystic Ganges River. So let me tell you about Ganga Devi and Shiva. So some of you have been here while I've seen this statue. This is my statue of the goddess of the Ganges River. Her name is Ganga Devi or Ganda Ganga Mata, Mother Ganges. And she travels on an, an alligator uh, or a crocodile down the Ganges River. Now, Ganga Devi wanted to come to earth. And the story is in the scriptures that she decided to leap from heaven into the earth. But when 
The gods saw how powerful she was. They thought that if she should hit the force, falling as a waterfall, at full speed, she would shatter the earth by her power. And Lord Shiva, in his mercy, jumped up from his meditation and caught her. He stood beneath her as the water fell and caught her in his hair. And then her power flowed down through his hair and into the earth. And her fall was broken. And so Lord Shiva saved the earth from Ganga Devi. Ganga Devi didn't mean to hurt the earth, but it would have been an accident. And so Lord Shiva intervened and she and Lord Shiva are friends ever since. And she is a goddess. Some people say she's a consort of Shiva, but the scriptures say that Parvati is his wife. And um, anyways, but some people like to say that Ganga is his other love. Either way, Ganga is a powerful goddess and she and Lord Shiva are directly connected. Lord Shiva is embraced by many Hindus and uh, there are two main branches in India of, of spirituality. One is the Shivite religion, which worships Lord Shiva, and the other is the Vaishnava religion, which worships Lord Vishnu. Now it's funny because in the Vaishnava scriptures, they say that Shiva worships Vishnu. And in the Shivite scriptures, they say that Vishnu worships Shiva. Either way, it doesn't matter. All gods are one god, as I always say. But if you're interested in yoga and mysticism, Shiva's fill is different than Vishnu, and we'll talk about Vishnu soon, but Shiva is a god of mystery and magic, ancient rites of magic, yogic powers, levitation, teleportation, spirit communication. All of these fall under the domain of Lord Shiva. So I invite you to explore him, for he is a mystic god. Lord Shiva is worshipped in two forms. One is called the iconic form, which you see behind me, which means in a full body human shape. Like iconic means like an icon, like an image of a person. There's also another form called the aniconic, which means without form. So let's look at the aniconic form. Today I'm wearing a mystical pendant. This is known as a Shiva Linga. It's a stone that comes from the Ganges River and it's a oval shaped stone. It is believed that this is a sign of Lord Shiva and that his power resides in these stones. These stones are literally found in the riverbeds of the Ganges River and also up in the Himalayan mountains. And they are very valuable and rare and treasured. So I have one that's wrapped in silver wire, but you can see it's a black oval stone. Now this is my necklace. It's a small version. The worshipers of Lord Shiva oftentimes wear these on chains like I have around their neck. So I'm wearing this as a pendant today, and you can see it's part of my jewelry. If you go to a temple of Lord Shiva, though, you'll find larger versions of these linga stones. And they can be any size, from small like my pendant to as big as a building. So let's take a look at the Shiva Linga. So this is my small Shiva Linga, but here is a larger one. And you can see it, it's done in black stone. This is a natural stone from the Ganges River. And uh, these are considered the presence of Shiva. So, you know, you can worship Shiva in this abstract form. He's a God that is beyond form. Some people say the name Shiva means that which is not, meaning beyond all form and description. And it's believed that the Shiva Linga represents the beginning of the cosmos, that in the beginning Shiva was a mass of energy and then from him expanded the entire cosmos. And so the Shiva Linga stone represents the beginning of all life and all cosmos. It's like the womb of the universe or the cosmic egg. Now the Shiva Lingas can be made of stone or silver or metal or even snow and ice. Sometimes in India they gather and make them, uh, carve them out of ice. Shiva Linga doesn't have to be permanent. It can be permanent or temporary. Now, as I say, it can be any metal. So they also have ones done in silver and gold. This is not real gold, but it is a gold colored Linga. And so um, again, Shiva's presence is seen in the Linga. So if you go to a temple of Shiva, you will see these stones all around. Usually they have one that's in the, the sanctuary and it's usually large, like three or four feet. I've seen them as big as six feet high. Uh, but these stones even get large as a building or a car. But uh, most people who worship Shiva have a small Shiva Linga in their house. And 
These stones are very, they're actually very expensive. So this one here is not cheap. It probably cost you about $80 for that. Uh, but I think it's worth it because it comes from India and it is a real linga stone from the Ganges. And uh, you can buy like these ones, these metallic ones, much cheaper. And they make them out of quartz crystal or any gemstone. So the linga is not limited, but it is another form of Shiva's image. And so many, as I said, many Shivites, worshippers of Lord Shiva, wear a linga stone as a, their sacred pendant, much like a Christian would wear a cross or a uh, Wiccan would wear a pinnacle. Many of the worshipers of Shiva wear the sacred stone. Now this one's wrapped in silver wire. Some are just have a hole drilled in their the open stone without the wrap. But um, so there you go, there's a linga stone. One of the ways to invoke Lord Shiva is through his sacred mantras. Mantras are prayers of power. And one of the Shiva mantras is Om Nama Shivaya. Om is the sound of the universe, which he bestows through his blessing. Om. Nama means hail or glory to, and Shivaya means to Shiva. So Om Nama Shivaya is, you know, power of the universe, hail to Lord Shiva. That's basically kind of what it translates as. Om Nama Shivaya. And many people have beads and they chant Om Nama Shivaya, Om Nama Shivaya. Now you'll notice on his hands, and his necklaces, they're made of rudrashka beads, it's a type of plant in India. And the seeds or the berries off the, the, the bush are uh, made into jewelry. And so many of uh, yogis hold a prayer beads made of these rudrashka beads. And they chant, Om Namah Shivaya. There's a wonderful song which I'll put the link below that you got to go listen to by Krishna Das. Krishna Das is an American who traveled to India and became a songwriter and a mystic. And he has a song called Om Namah Shivaya. And it's like, Om Namah Shivaya, Namah Shivaya. Anyways, I'll put the link below. He does it way better than me. But this is his mantra, Om Namah Shivaya. So you can invoke Lord Shiva for, for yogic power, to understand the mysteries of the cosmos, to understand connecting with animals, not just snakes and bulls, but any animal. All the animals are under his protection. Lord Shiva is also known as um, the leader of the Ganas. The Ganas are spirits. Lord Shiva travels with a retinue of ghosts and spirits. He helps the souls that are crossing. Much like in the Wiccan tradition, the, the, you know, the Lord uh, helps souls to cross to the spirit world. Lord Shiva does this as well. So he's often invoked at funerals, at cremation grounds in India. And so many people find that uh, he is the god of death. Uh, as god of destruction, he allows our mortal bodies to be destroyed in order that our spirits will soar. It may sound morbid to those of us in the West, but it's actually very beautiful, the thought that, that God participates in your transition. You see, and so we can call on Shiva in times of sorrow and death as well. Whenever there is a great destruction in India, like an earthquake or a landslide, they always say it was the will of Shiva, that Shiva's power was released, the destroyer, and that there are purposes beyond that which we can understand. It doesn't mean that there's not suffering or we shouldn't care, but it means that even in our suffering, we are not alone, that somehow the God will take it and turn it into something beautiful and life-affirming. So I hope this has inspired you today. And if you're interested in studying yoga, you definitely want to invoke Lord Shiva. He is the god of yogis. As I said, one of his titles is Adi Yogi, which means the primal yogi, that he was in the beginning and all yogas emanate from him, whether Hatha Yoga or Kundalini Yoga or any other type of yoga. So Lord Shiva is the god of yogis. And if you like to do yoga and explore mystical Eastern practices, you definitely are going to want to get to know Lord Shiva. Now you remember, we'll go down to the Ganges River soon. By my house, I consecrated the river last year, the new Ganges. And for those of you who have followed, you know that was named after this goddess, Ganga Devi, who we talked about earlier. So Ganga Devi is in Lord Shiva's hair and flows through him. So um, we'll talk about Lord Shiva next time we go to the, the river. 
In fact, maybe next Wednesday we'll focus on Ganga Devi. Yeah, let's do that. Well, guys, I've had the best time today. I hope this has been of interest to you and that you enjoy learning about it. Tell me in the box below, do you want us to do Yoga Friday each week? What do you think? What are your thoughts on that? Share with me. And tell me, have you ever had a mystic encounter with Lord Shiva? Or do you do yoga? And have you had an encounter with him in yoga? Let's share each other's experiences and talk. Put your comments in the box below. Well, guys, thanks for being here. I love you. Please help me out. Like this video. Thumbs up. Favorite it. Share it with your friends. And make sure to hit subscribe. We'd love you to be here. Oh, and don't forget, tomorrow on Saturday is our Psychic Development class. That's right. Go register. There's still time today. Go to my website, PsycheBob.com. And over there, you can read about my class and register. Tomorrow morning, I will send out the Zoom link shortly before class. You don't have to know how to work Zoom or have it on your computer. All you have to do is register, and then I will send you a link. The link will automatically bring you into Zoom. So I hope you'll be there. Come and join us. We're going to do a class tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern from 12 to 2 on Clear Audience, How to Hear the Voices of Spirit People. I'd love to have you there. Make sure to come out and join us. And, uh, you know... Register, it's only $30, two hours live, and you get to talk to me live through Zoom and answer your questions about your Claire audience. So come out and join us tomorrow. I hope to see you there. Go register today, $30, live training with Psychic Bob. A lot of you have been joining and saying how much the class is helping you. I hope to hear from you. Love you guys. Keep it here at Spirit Channel. And don't forget, be here tomorrow for Saturday, which is Saturday Seance. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to run. Say goodbye. I'm going to be out of here.